As is tradition on this small retro channel, we start with a box. A box containing an item I acquired using one of the tricks in my latest book, Mastering the Art of the Dutch Version of eBay. The trick of bidding 25 euros. Okay, in all honesty, the asking price was 25 bucks and I was the first to send a message saying I wanted to buy the items for that listed price. Inside we find a box of floppies that looks different from normal floppy disk boxes. Sometimes it's difficult to show how big an item is on camera, but for that I now have my dog Betsy as a size reference. Shown next to the 3.5 inch and 5.25 inch discs, it becomes even more clear that we are dealing with bigger discs. Fellow retro enthusiasts are probably already screaming at the screen, we have 8 inch floppy discs in front of us. The conversation that led to my purchasing these discs was interesting, as are most conversations on the Dutch version of eBay. Let's look at a quick reconstruction of that. The seller was asking 25 bucks for the discs, as I said. When I saw them, I immediately sent a message saying I would like to buy them for that amount, hoping time was on my side, as it turned out to be. As the seller replied, you were the first, so I'll sell the discs to you. Shipping was arranged and then as most sellers do they asked me what I was going to do with the discs and if I had a vintage computer hobby. I replied that I collect old computers. Never would I have expected that the seller would continue by saying ah okay the two P5000s these discs belong to I sent to the dump. Shocked is the best way to summarize my reaction when I read that. Before we unlock the floppy case I want to discuss something I started on my archive site as a result of this Dutch version of eBay conversation, the Orphan Disk Initiative. If you google Orphan Disks, you get a definition related to hard drives in RAID, but that is not the definition I had in mind. Orphan Disks to me are floppy disks that lost the computers they were intended to be used with. And with the Orphan Disks Initiative we've made it our archives mission to provide these discs with a good home. When I opened the floppy case, which due to its size almost had something comical, I find a whole bunch of 8 inch floppies, most of them Philips branded. Weirdly, many discs are not in sleeves, so I have to sort them out. But first, I want to zoom in on the Philips P5000 line of computers that the seller mentioned. When I google that, the first thing I find is a P5004 computer which appears to be a disk unit and a terminal. A P5002 is for sale on another side, of dubious nature. It is 50% off and with free shipping. Great deal for something that doesn't look easily shippable. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit tempted to pay and see what happens. But all the scammy website alarms flash, even with the option of returning within 40 days if something is not good. Then I found a page related to James Bond, writing that the P5000 line of computers is featured in the James Bond movie for your eyes only. Well, for some reason, one of the few DVD movies I still own is for your eyes only. So let's see if we can find the computers in the movie without disobeying the copyright gods. It has been a long time since I used a DVD menu that brings back the good old days. A Philips computer is shown in a sequence where Bond, I think, is trying to find out what someone looks like. We first see interesting tech and then they move into a separate room. While walking to that room they appear to pass a Philips disk drive unit. The separate room they entered has a lot of disk packs, one of which is loaded into a drive. And then Q starts inputting stuff into what appears to be a Philips computer. The sequence where they make a face with the Philips computer is really funny, especially when you see what the computer prints. The computers are better visible in this scene. Here, for instance, we see a Philips P5003, and this desk-like computer is a Philips P330, which has a built-in printer and cassette drive. Interestingly, the P330 occasionally shows up on the Dutch version of eBay. What always interested me about old James Bond films, and probably old films in general, is the use of real effects, which always make films look so much better. The scene where the ship containing the Philips computer sinks looks incredible. So incredible, I wanted to know what the budget of this film was. I looked it up and found that it was 28 million US dollars. Converted to today's dollars, that's almost 100 million. Back to the floppy disks, which I started organizing by separating the disk with sleeves from those without sleeves. In between the discs was also a sort of poster from a fruit and vegetable seller. When you handle these discs, you start understanding why they call them floppy discs. Then I started putting the discs in sleeves. In one sleeve was a document. Not really sure what this is supposed to mean.
Then I came across a disc labeled CPM and SuperCalc. When you Google P5002, it appears to be a word processor. Interesting, a word processor that runs CPM? This disc I want to try in my Sanyo MBC3000. Then I took the separators from the case, as I don't really like those, and put the disc back into the case. I started counting them and counted 80 of them. To give an impression of what type of programs are included, I will now show the discs. Fast forward to skip this. This appears to be a very diverse collection of discs. I moved my boat anchor sized Sanyo MBC3000 from the attic to see if the discs will work with this computer, as some of the discs at CPM, the operating system this computer runs on. Starting up this computer always feels like starting a play. I tried some discs, but it became pretty clear to me that the computer drives are not compatible with these discs. Although of course these drives in general don't like to load any type of discs. Something I still want to try to fix. The case next to this computer looks really nice though. Some of the discs came with inserts, as I showed before. Most of them look like manuals or invoices. That brings me to the wrap up of this video. I made a page dedicated to these discs on my archive website. There you can find the documents I found in the disc sleeves to read, as well as pictures of all the discs. My main goal with these discs, of course, is to archive them. That is why on the homepage of the archive, I have a message indicating that I'm searching for an 8-inch drive capable of reading single-sided discs. Of course, I have saved searches on all the second-hand marketplaces for these drives as well. For some weird reason, I forgot to mention in the script that I added a bunch of books to my archive that people, if they're interested, can read. I added some books on uh, TRS-80 stuff, but also uh, stuff related to the VIC-20, like this book VIC Revealed, which is a nice book that you can skip through on my archive. Back to the scripted part. Finding an emulator for this platform is probably impossible, but digitizing this Dutch computer heritage is worth the hassle. If you can help me get an 8-inch drive, maybe even to borrow one, please get in touch. I have contact options on both of my sites. So that brings me to the end of this video. I'm pretty excited to add this little floppy gold mine to my collection. The only thing left is to thank the people who made it all the way here for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye!